In section 9.6, we're going to be looking at compositions of reflections. So we're going to see what happens when we reflect an object over parallel lines and then also over intersecting lines. We are also going to look at what a glide reflection is and we will look at some different isometries. So this first slide explains to us how both translations and rotations are a composition of true reflections. And we have two different cases here. The first case is if you reflect an object across two parallel lines, such as these ones right here, when that object flips twice, it's as if it's simply a translation. So I'm taking that exact image and I'm translating it. Now what's interesting is your distance will always be two times the distance between your lines. So let's just say we called these lines L and M. Here the distance moved would be 2 L M. Whatever the distance is between those lines, the distance that your original object is moved will be 2 times that. And then we also have a second case, which is um, reflecting an object across two intersecting lines. And what's interesting about that is whatever the angle is, so let's call this angle X, your rotation is equal to 2X. So when you flip this reflection twice, it ends up being a simple rotation, and you're going to have it by 2X. Okay, so here we're going to look at some examples. Um, the first one, we're going to be taking this letter R, and we are going to reflect it over the parallel lines L and M, and they're asking us to describe the direction and distance of the translation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect R across line L, which will look something like that. That's not perfect, but you get the idea. Then when I reflect it again across M, So again, this isn't perfect, but you can tell that when I've reflected this twice, it's a simple translation moving to the right, and I know that my distance is going to be 2 LM. Whatever the distance between L and M is, that is my distance doubled for my uh, composition of reflections there. Now I'm also going to do the same thing with the second example, but I'm now reflecting over two intersecting lines. So again, I'm going to try to do this for you guys. It's not going to be perfect. So I'm first going to reflect over line L. I get something like that. And then if I reflect over line M, I get something like that. And you can tell that what I've done is I've taken my original letter R and I have rotated it in a clockwise direction. So I rotate it clockwise. And because the angle between L and M is 70, I know that we have rotated double that, so 140 degrees. All right, there's a U try problem for you to try. You see these are two intersecting lines. So I want you to do a rough sketch of what R will look like when it has been reflected across lines A and B. But then also please give me a description of the reflection. Okay, so there's a couple of things on this slide. First thing is we have the fundamental theorem of isometries, which tells us that one of two congruent figures can be mapped onto another by the composition of at most three ref reflections. So any sort of transformation that you see can be thought of as at most three reflections. We just learned about rotations being two reflections over intersecting lines, and translations are two reflections over parallel lines. We're now going to look at this thing called the glide reflection, though, which is where you take an image and you first translate it and then you reflect it over a line. So we're going to do an example here. What I'm being asked to do is take this triangle TEX and I need to perform a glide reflection where the translation is represented by this rule here, X comma Y minus 5, and then the reflection is going to be over x equals 0. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to determine the points of the triangle TEX. So I have negative 1, 3, negative 2, 1, and negative 5, 2. And the rule is saying that I keep my x value exactly the same, but I subtract 5 from my y. Okay, so my first point is going to be negative 2, negative 4. That's going to be x prime. So I just subtract, subtracted 5 from my y value, or I moved it down by 5. And then e is going to be negative 1, negative 2. That's e prime. And t is negative 5, negative 3. So that's t prime. So the first part of my problem is complete. I now have this new t prime, e prime, x prime. But I still have to do more. I need to reflect this over the line x equals 0. So I'm going to draw on that line. x equals 0 is this line right here, my y-axis. So I need to reflect each of those points over that line. So for E, I go in one, so I go out one. There's E, I'm going to call it double prime because now it's prime again. T, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's T double prime and X, X double prime. Okay, so now I'm going to connect these dots, and I have my final triangle, T double prime, E double prime, X double prime. And you can see that not only did I move it, its location within this graph, but I also flipped the orientation. So that is called a glide reflection. Here's a U-try example of a glide reflection for you to do. It's that same triangle, it's just you need to do um, a different translation and reflect over a different line. So now we're looking at how to classify different transformations. There are four isometries that we learned about. The translation, which is just moving an object but keeping the orientation the same. A rotation is like spinning that object counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on what's stated. And in those two transformations, the orientations stay the same. But if I look at reflections and glide reflections, my orientations are opposite. So you can see this is normal R, normal R, normal R. This is a normal R, it's just turned. But now here in reflection and glide reflection, this R is backwards, and so is this one. So my orientations have changed. So what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at some different examples and trying to figure out what type of transformation occurred based on whether the orientations are the same or not. So in this first example, we have the word turn, and it's got this arrow underneath it. If I look at A, can I still read the word turn as normal? No, I can't. So that means that my orientation has changed. So if my orientation changes, I cannot possibly have a translation or a rotation. I'm looking at some sort of glide reflection or reflection. Now because I have not only changed my orientation, but I've kind of spun this a little bit, that means I must have also translated. So this first example is an example of a glide reflection. In example B, if you look at the orientation, you can still read that word. You just have to kind of turn your head. Um, so the orientation is the same. It's not a translation, though, because a translation, this object would look exactly the same, just dragged to another spot. So I know that this must be a rotation. So here's a U-try problem for you. You're starting with the letter P, and you're looking at A, B, and C to try to determine are their orientations the same or are they opposite, and is it a translation, a rotation, a reflection, or a glide reflection?